All right, it is now time for member statements, and I recognize the member from Muskegawet, James Bay. I knew that. Thank you, Speaker. I speak about Pitabek Inuinwuk Community Culture and Recreation Center project in Fort Albany, First Nations. This project would play a critical role in the preservation and revitalization of the history, culture, and language of the Muskego people. And I would also feel that it would also fill a gap in Fort Albany community infrastructure and services. Speaker, the lack of infrastructure in Fort Albany would be a disgrace for any municipality in the province. In light of the ongoing mental health crisis in Fort Albany, this center can provide a safe space for youth and elders, an area to highlight and celebrate the local culture and the arts, a library adult learning facility. And most important of all, it includes a library and archive to preserve the history of the people of Meshkegawak ASCII and the history of abuse, alienation, and the violence of children suffered in the infamous St. Anne Residential School of Fort Albany. I just ask, ask the Minister of Infrastructure to support the positive project so that Ontario and Canada can start acting like treaty partners. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Sarnia Lanton. Thank you, Speaker. It's a privilege to rise today to announce more important investments, totaling over $530,000 in my riding of Sarnia Lanton by the Government of Ontario. This funding is flowing through the Resilient Communities Fund, which was launched by our government to support the nonprofit sector recover and rebuild from the impacts of COVID-19 pan pandemic. I'm pleased to share that in Sarnia Lampton, eight important community organizations will be receiving funds from the Resilient Communities Funding, including St. Joseph's Hospice, the Family Counseling Center, Community Living Sarnia Lampton, Your House Boys Home, Theatre Sarnia, Sarnia Lampton Rebound, La Centra Communitaire Regional Sarnia Lampton, the Women's Interville Home of Sarnia Lampton, and Mr. Speaker, we believe that organizations like these enrich the lives of people in our communities. They will play an important role in the recovery and building back a strong and prosperous economy in Sarnia Lampton and Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward to sharing more good news about Sarnia Lampton with you in this house in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from York, Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize a valuable and very insightful report on housing released last month through the great work by Social Planning Toronto. This five-year study is the first of its kind that maps out the way racialized individuals, specific racialized population groups, newcomers and refugees disproportionately affected by the housing crisis in Toronto. The report is entitled Spaces place and Places of Exclusion Mapping Rental Housing Disparities for Toronto's Racialized and Immigrant Communities. As Member of the Provincial Parliament for York Southwestern and through my role as Member of the Black Caucus and the Youth Engagement Critic for the Official Opposition, I can affirm that the dis disturbing statistics and evidence of disparities that exist along racial, social and spatial lines is all too familiar. The official opposition's own housing plan, entitled Homes You Can Afford, recognizes that housing policies must be responsive to different communities and different regions to ensure that housing is addressed across racial, social, and geographic divides. I welcome the key foundings and policy and research directions provided to address urgent housing and housing-related needs, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I know it's been a very tough year for everyone. We've all had to make sacrifices for the greater good of our society. But I'm pleased to say that COVID-19 can't stop Christmas festivities in Carleton. Just this past weekend, the Richmond Lions Club held their annual Christmas cheer fundraising drive to support local food banks in collaboration with the Richmond Village Association's annual Richmond Santa Claus Parade. This year, the Richmond Santa Claus Parade took on a new format. 
Instead of asking people to gather in crowds on the streets to watch the parade floats and Santa go by, the floats were stationary and separated to maintain physical distancing, and the community was encouraged to drive through the floats at the Richmond Fairgrounds. I was pleased to set up a float just like I do each year, and I was of course accompanied by my dog Baxter, who was wearing Christmas lights and is a fan favourite. Mr. Speaker, the community turnout was absolutely incredible. The drive through parade was supposed to start at 5.30, but doors actually opened at 4.50 because there was such a long lineup. I'm also proud to say that the community raised an incredible amount of food for the local food bank. There was barely any room left in the back of the pickup truck that was collecting all of the donations for the community. Many community members had also decorated their own cars and were wearing Christmas lights as they drove by, participating in the Christmas festivities. Mr. Speaker, it was such a wonderful event, and even though I was standing outside in the cold for almost three hours, I didn't feel the cold at all because the Christmas cheer, excitement, shouts of Merry Christmas, and the opportunity to speak briefly with residents as they drove by kept everyone warm and happy. Thank you to the Richmond Village Association, and I can't wait to do it again this Sunday, December 13, in Metcalf. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Parkdale, High Park. Thank you, Speaker. A new year is almost upon us. One of the things we are hopeful 2021 will bring is the end of the pandemic. The COVID-19 crisis has changed us all, and people want to heal from it. We want to hug our grandparents, dine in at our favorite local restaurants, celebrate birthdays and other milestones with family and friends. To heal, Speaker, and to save lives and lift restrictions, Ontarians need an efficient and equ equitable vaccine distribution. We must be aware that even when this desperately needed, highly anticipated vaccine is available, many will be hesitant to take it. The World Health Organization identified vaccine hesitancy as one of the top 10 global health threats, and it has been a growing trend in Ontario over the past few years due to disinformation. Now that we have a vaccine against COVID-19, we need to acknowledge that people may be feeling vaccine hesitancy. The good news is that there are best practices from the fields of public health to draw upon. The mo it is most important to clearly communicate the benefits of a vaccine while transparently addressing people's concerns. The COVID-19 vaccine is the key to finally putting a stop to the needless deaths from the virus. I urge this government to work with the experts, with communities that have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, and with all of us across political party lines on a clear, effective, and culturally appropriate public health campaign to build trust and confidence in the COVID-19 vaccine. Our collective health depends on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further member statement. I recognize the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today ahead of the holiday season to encourage residents of Perry Sound, Muskoka, and all Ontarians to shop locally for Christmas and other gifts this winter. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has hurt small businesses across Ontario, so it is more important than ever that we support them during the biggest shopping season of the year. My riding of Perry Sound, Muskoka is home to many talented artisans, small manufacturers, family-run shops, and restaurants who have adapted their businesses during this health crisis. Even if you don't want to go into stores right now, many local shops have developed websites so you can browse their inventory from home, or they will be happy to take orders over the phone for curbside pickup or delivery. Restaurants are offering gourmet takeout meals, and a break from cooking dinner always makes a good gift. I encourage everyone to support local businesses and their communities as much as possible this holiday season, not only by shopping at local stores, but by looking for high-quality products made in Ontario or Canada. When we shop local, money goes back into our communities and supports the local economy. We help our fellow Ontarians put food on the table, and we help our province recover. This Christmas, give a gift to your community, shop local, buy local. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. Farmers in India are under attack. Right now, farmers are fighting for their very livelihood as they protest the mass privatization of farming by the Indian government. In response, the Indian government has used tear gas, water cannons, and beaten peaceful farmers. Now, thousands of people from across the world have protested in solidarity with these farmers, including people across Canada. Leaders across the world have spoken in solidarity with these farmers, including leaders from across Canada. 
But Premier Ford has remained silent, and his silence is deafening. That's why I'm calling on Premier Ford to immediately speak in support of these peaceful farmers and their struggle for justice. Right now, farmers in India are fighting for their very survival. New laws put forward by the Indian government will put farmers at the mercy of super-rich corporations. As farmers rise up to peacefully protest these unjust laws, they are being met with violence and repression. And that's why I want to send a very clear message to the Indian government. The whole world is watching. We are watching as you unjustly beat, brutalize, tear gas and water, ga water cannon these peaceful protesters. We are watching reports that the internet is being disrupted for these peaceful protesters. We're going to share these injustices with the world. We're going to yell it from the rooftops, and we won't stop until farmers get the justice that they need and that they deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Further member statement, I recognize the member from Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, as a member of provincial parliament, I often have the wonderful opportunity to thank so many in our community organizations, individuals who, uh, who interact with the provincial government and or are supported. But I wanted to take a special thank to thank the United Way Northumberland for the remarkable work that they're doing in our community. They're showing local love in our community. They've launched a call for applications for their emergency community support fund. And I'd like to thank Bruce McCartney, and president, who's president, and Nick Palalis, the treasurer, for the work they're doing the entire board, but especially the remarkable staff at United Way, who each and every day work hard to give and support those in need and those organizations in need in our community. Bobby, Kathy, Diane, Maggie, Helen, thank you for the work that they do. This fund, Mr. Speaker, provides financial support to charities and nonprofit organizations adapting their frontline services to new COVID-19 realities. They've supported Community Care in Northumberland, Cornerstone Violence and Family Prevention Centre, Greenwood Coalition, the Help Centre North Northumberland, Local Food for Local Good, Salvation Army, and finally the YMCA Northumberland. Despite these challenging times, Mr. Speaker, the work of United Way in our community has never been more important. It's the largest funder outside of government for social service programs in our area. They are quite literally bringing people together, and I'd like to thank the staff, again, the team at United Way, for all you're doing for our community in Northumberland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. It's with a heavy heart today that I rise to inform the House of the passing of June Turner on Saturday, December 5th. Some of you will know June as the wife of former Speaker of the House, John M. Turner. Her youngest son, Ian, described her to me as the living embodiment of what the TV character June Cleaver was supposed to be. Her love for her community, her friends, and her neighbors was only surpassed by the love that she had for her family. Loving, loyal, supportive, and welcoming all described June. She was born in what was once known as York County near here in 1925. She moved to Peterborough with her family in her early teens, where she embarked on a lifelong friendship with Ruth and Beatrix. June met John not long before John would go overseas to defend Canada in the Second World War. Their courtship, like many at the time, would continue by correspondence until John returned home after the war. Eventually, they would marry in 1947. During the war, June worked at General Electric in Peterborough, but decided that her true calling was that of the noblest of pursuits, and that was being a mother. She left GE shortly after getting married to focus on raising a family, eventually having six children in all. June will be dearly missed by all who knew her, for she's one of those rare individuals that I can truly say made the world a better place for those who had the pleasure of her company. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I ask for unanimous consent for a moment of silence for June and all the spouses of those who have served in Ontario. The member is seeking unanimous consent uh, to pay uh, uh, respect to the passing of Ms. Turner and all others. Agreed? Agreed. May we stand for a few moments, please?
may be seated.